I want to describe only one incident where it shows how generous and how intelligent Professor G. N. Ramachandran was. I was assigned a project on anomalous dispersion of X-rays and I was studying it. But I was always interested in a theory called dynamical theory of X-ray diffraction, developed originally by Ewald. But nobody had combined, on the one hand, the vibration of atoms in the crystal and the dynamical theory developed by Professor Ewald. So it occurred to me that I should try to combine the two and see what happens. One day when researching in the library, I got a clue and based on that, I expanded on it and developed all the necessary mathematics in terms of Fourier transforms and I wrote a paper. Then when I gave it to him, he was very happy, he pleased, and then he wrote my name only on it and then told me to simply acknowledge him. I was very happy and then he took and wrote to Professor Ival and forwarded that paper. On receiving that, Professor Ival was very interested and he immediately accepted the paper. But a little later, he had some questions and he was wondering whether some people might know. And Professor GNR wrote a very strong letter defending my work and also asked me to do a little more expansion of it, which I did. And then he stood by uh, uh, very firmly with me and then sent the paper back to Ival. Ival accepted the paper finally. I was amazed that he was so generous. He simply asked me to publish it on my own name and then he wanted me to be simply acknowledged. That's what I did. I have great regard for him. Uh, all my four years of PhD work, we had interacted many times. Every time I came out of his room, with a greater physical intuition. It's very, very remarkable that I had a very lucky to have such a very good professor and I'm so thankful to him and I very much respect his memory. I'm Raghupati Sharma. I joined Professor Ramchandran's department in 1957 after completing a physics honors in Presidency College. And uh, there was a crystallography course uh, given by Ramchandran in the, uh, it was a very new department, had just started about four or five years before that. Um, and uh, there was a, a Master of Science uh, uh, course in uh, X-ray crystallography that Ramchandran was conducting. And we all, it was a sort of a prerequisite for joining to do research with Professor Ramchandran. So I did that and in 1958, I uh, started working as a, a graduate student in his laboratory till about 1963 um, when I submitted my thesis. And in 1963, I left, um, submitted my thesis and I left for England to work in the Royal Institution of Great Britain where Sir Lawrence Bragg was the director and we were working on the structure of lysozyme. There was a man called David Phillips who later became Sir David Phillips and Lord David Phillips and, and so on. Uh, this is the first enzyme whose structure was determined. Now, uh, then I went to Oxford with David Phillips before uh, my immigrating to the United States, um, first three years in National Institutes of Health, and then I got my own faculty appointment in State University of New York in Stony Brook uh, in 1971, and I remained there for about 28 or 29 years before I retired as a professor of biochemistry. Whatever I am today, Whatever research I have done, all of that I give credit to one man, Jane Ramchandran. Now, during this entire period, both in London, Oxford, Washington, and Stony Brook, I was all the time in contact with Professor Ramchandran. As I said, I even attended his um, 60th birthday celebration in Madras 
in 1982. And I always admired him and his contribution to biophysics, and I wanted to write his biography. I was wondering why nobody else. There were several students Ramchandran had, there were several people who knew Ramchandran as well as, or even better than I did. I didn't know why none of them were writing a biography. So in 1993, I met one of my frequent visits to India. Uh, every time I used to meet Ramchandran, I met him in Bangalore and I asked him permission to write the biography. He was very happy to give me that permission and said he will uh, cooperate with me in any way he could. And so in 1995, I took a sabbatical leave from the department and I went to India, I went to Bangalore. I interviewed several people, nearly 50 people, I recorded lots of interviews, met Ramchandran almost two or three times a week, talked to his family, his brothers, his children, and so on. And I wrote the book and it was published in 1998. Now here is the biography of uh, Jain Ramchandran. You see, Ramchandran, he doesn't know how to build a public image. And I think he was pretty humble, too humble, in my opinion. He should have beaten his drum a little harder. And Ramchandran did not know how to do that. He should have hired a PR. And CNR also felt at the time that his merits were not recognized. GNR, I think, was one of the most brilliant biophysicists in India. And I think his uh, work was not... Re now people do talk about collagen, they associated with Ramchandra. I don't know whether it was the result of the biography that I wrote, or generally scientists are a little more broad-minded and are willing to give credit where it is due. So that was my background and why I wrote the book. Absolutely. He is the father of uh, India's molecular biology uh, research, literally. I mean, the structural molecular biology. I mean, molecular biology, by definition, can mean so many things, you know. So, But structural molecular biology, he laid the foundation, literally. The association of Ramachandran was really one of the outstanding um, you know, qualifications, you know. Like, for example, uh, Raghupati Sharma himself, he got, uh, I mean, after the conference and uh, the things, you know, he got uh, that invitation from D.C. Phillips in uh, Cambridge to work with him on lysozyme. So, and, you know, you know th th that kind of thing. Kartha, for example, you know, I think he got uh, an invitation to uh, in, um, what is it, Russell Park Institute, dear Harker. So, these are all the kinds of things, you know, almost practically, and everyone, for example, when uh, Ramachandran recommended me to Pauli's lab in Caltech, see, I didn't even write anything. I got in, I mean, he wrote the, the lab they propounding, and then I got the invitation directly from them to come and work in uh, that. So that kind of thing. So yeah. you know, it, it's amazing to look, you know, the, the, you know going to look back in, uh, in your association with him and so on. How fantastic the whole experience has been, you know. Thank you for getting me the opportunity to talk something unique experience I had with Professor J.N. Ramachandra. Professor J.N. Ramachandra was my teacher in MBU IISC and guided many of us at the start of our career how to be inspired and excited with science and be happy. During Professor's stay in Gita Malishwaram, one of the days in mid-90s, his ex-student Professor Kulaskar asked me to go and meet Professor Jainar, which prompted not one, but almost one year every Saturday afternoon to meet him at his residence. And lucky to observe the glittering thoughts and excitement reflected from him on understanding of physics of music. Physics of music studied by Helmholtz to quantify and analyze the frequency of notes used in Western classical music and later by C.V. Raman and others for Indian classical music. Music is a multitonic and either just for instruments and ear 
or equal temperament which is for keyboards in frequencies. Concept introduced by Galileo and others was that two musical notes having frequencies in simple integer ratios will have a consonant or melodious sound otherwise not or dissonant. Each of Hindustani swaras and notes can be expressed in many integer ratios. Professor GNR, a mathematical genius, helped me and asked me to generate on computer all possible such ratios to elaborate and analyze which of them occur to produce melodies or consonant and which other ratios may share frequencies nearby but will not get generate melody. He attempted to represent not only 12 men swaras, extended to the 22 srutis, interested to come up a kind of allowed ratios of integers in musical notes, a visionary as he was. Unfortunately, his endeavor was stalled due to conditions of their health, madam and sir, they joined their younger son in Ahmedabad. But when he came back to Chennai, called me to meet once more. I met him in November 2000, last meeting with him. We discussed details of the work as a paper form and left all the documents with him. This incident surprised the doctor who was taking care of him as Professor was fully charged, spoke so clearly for almost one and a half hours, a rare incident those days. But I know why. Full dedication, passion, engrossment to physics of music was still inspiring his great mind. Thank you. I am Sai Krishnan Kairat, uh, a professor at biology, ISR Pune. I did my PhD at uh, MBU under Professor Vijayan on X-ray crystallography. But at MBU, I learned directly from Professor C. Ramakrishnan about uh, protein conformation and also about Ramachandran map. And this has been an enriching experience. Ramachandran map is something that we use in our lab frequently for validation of protein structures and also as a tool uh, to understand pro protein conformation and to uh, teach about protein conformation and the relevance of torsion angles to the students. But uh, Ramachandran plot is not limited just to these uh, ideas. Uh, it can also result in new discoveries being made. For example, uh, we recently discovered a unique conformation of a loop which was uh, stapled by two cysteines chelated by a metal. Now, this conformation of the loop mapped uniquely to a region in the Ramachandran map. And there were a large number of points at that region. And we could find that this unique conformation of the loop was not just limited to this one protein, but was present in many other proteins which were uh, not related to the protein that we were studying. This provided a means to identify a new conformation. And this is the power of Ramachandran map. A Ramachandran map is evergreen. It has been providing new insights into protein conformation and structure even now, and it would continue to do so is what I believe.